I'm Dave Thomas, and it's my pleasure to be with uh, Martin Odersky, of course, the uh, an very famous father of Scala, and, uh, which is a, an impressive journey from uh, uh, research into a, a language which is uh, taking off. I think in the, your slide today it showed something over 100,000 uh, you know, projected users. It's always difficult to tell exactly. Always I mean, difficult to tell, but that's But it's only a lot of you know, serious commercial users like Twitter and so on, well-known you know, guild group and so on. So uh, Martin gave a great talk on uh, the simple parts of Scala, and uh, I think for you know, one of the criticisms that people have sort of said is that, gee, it's really kind of a melting pot language in some sense. It's got some Java, some Haskell, some you know, OO, and so on. And uh, and I think today you you cleared that up. But maybe for um, you know our audience who have yet to see your talk, but will hopefully see it live or on video, you could sort of maybe summarize the, the, the key features that you think are important for people to learn when they're really adopting Scala. Okay, so Scala is a language that uh, uh, spans a wide spectrum, not only because it's both functional and object-oriented, but also because it can grow into new languages. It's a very good substrate to build new domain-specific languages on. And that can make for a very confusing uh, Tower of Babel, uh, that uh, people build all sorts of languages as Scala libraries. And uh, those are all undeniably useful in the uh, specific application domain, but uh, sometimes it can get very overwhelming. So what I try to do in the talk is actually take a step back and says, well, let's let's leave all the domain-specific languages and advanced libraries aside. If it's just Scala, what's the core of Scala? What are we really talking about? And uh, the word I came up with is a very old characterization that it's really a modular language. Uh, modular means it's built from simple parts that can be combined in interesting ways. And I was trying to identify those simple parts uh, that help people essentially compose programs, uh, decompose programs, and abstract over programs. What we had there were seven features. Uh, one was that uh, everything is an expression, everything can be nested, data can be constructed and deconstructed in duals, so that's case classes and pattern matching. Uh, functions are values, uh, but you can also fall back to the state machine behavior of recursion. Uh, immutable collections are a backbone for what we do and a, uh, the right amount and the typically a very modest amount of mutable state that you mix in the whole thing and that for me is sort of the trait of successful Scala programming and that's what I was talking about today. I thought it was very effectively communicated. It's great to have you. Um, now some of the big users of Scala come from the Haskell community and uh, there's a particular uh, dialect of uh, Scala, uh, you know, say a DSL, uh, Scala Z, uh, which has a sort of strong opinion about you know, really uh, wanting the monadic approach and, uh, and higher order types and so on. Um, you know, they've, they've argued that you know, the monad implementation with tra trampoline and so on can be quite inefficient, but I think what you showed today is really is a lot of cases where you don't really need to take the monadic approach for a lot of things, right? Yeah, so, so monads are great, just to put, put, put that right. Uh, we use them all the time because monads are options and lists and futures and everything. All these things are monads. Uh, right. and but they're under the surface. Uh, well, they are, they are library abstractions yeah, sure, that right. people, people right. use, as a matter of fact, without even seeing them as monads. Right, they're just right. things that have this monadic nature. Right. And we use, essentially, that all the time. And uh, four expressions in Scala are very convenient syntactic sugar over any computations over arbitrary monads. So all this is great. Uh, but Haskell is a different language from Scala in the sense that it is a lazy functional language and it is a pure functional language. And those two things go, to be, to go together because it turns out that once you're lazy, you really can't be cavalier about having effects anymore because you don't know when they will happen. So you need to be pure. I, I talked to Simon Ch Ch Peyton Jones a lot and one thing he said is you can debate about whether laziness is the right thing or not. In fact, that's a thing that uh, I guess uh, 
most, most language communities have stayed away from laziness. But he says laziness, the big thing in Haskell was it kept us pure. So that is one very clear and rigid model of function programming, which is not shared by Scala. So Scala is more in the ML tradition that you have a strict functional language and you do have side effects. But you can express uh, essentially a pure functional language by encapsulating all effects in monads. And that's what Scala Z does. And uh, I think it's a possibility to do that, but it's not really, for me, the natural way to go about Scala programming. Uh, for me, the natural way to deal with effects still waits to be invented. I'm actually quite hopeful that we will find something in the next five years, say, that will be practical. Um, and for that reason, I would say definitely functional programming is about managing effects, about minimizing effects, but we do not necessarily at the present point have to capture that in a, them in a type system. This, it might be implicit, a pr implicit uh, understanding that well, in your program, you want to minimize effects. That's what functional programming is. That's my current viewpoint on it, and I know that not everyone shares it. Well, we all have our perspective. That's right. And, and should. Uh, in terms of the implementation, um, you know, the, there's been some work at the JVM level, but it, um, I think it's, uh, it's uh, clearly to be applauded. We were talking to both uh, John Dumovich from IBM and uh, George Saab from uh, Oracle. Um, However, um, they don't, they're still a bit short for what uh, functional programming uh, could use in terms of, you know, I mean, you, have, you, have to, you do a lot of work to get tail recursion, for example, and... Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, JDK 8 with the lambdas is great for us because it will give us more, a more lightweight implementation of closures to all functional languages, so this is a big step forward. I'm also very uh, glad about the default methods and interfaces because these will be give us a much more direct implementation of a lot of the things we do in traits. So all these things are definitely good. But yeah, of course, in a functional language, you would like to have uh, always more. <laughs> in particular, native tail recursions would be nice. Uh, multiple values would be nice, uh, so that you could multiple returns could right. be nice. And I actually I hear that that is planned for Java 10. So. In fact, it's, I would say overall it's a great platform to be on because it definitely moves in the right direction, even though sometimes the movement is slower than you would like it to be, but that's life. Is there any uh, activity in Scala for the CLR? Uh, no. I know we, there was some, some sort of starts, but... There was some, and we have... Uh, there's no recent activity uh, on the CLR. Um, part of the reason is that they are very good and established competitors on the CLR. Right. C sharp is a more functional language than Java is, and then there's F sharp, of course, right. which is a direct port of an ML-like oh, language oh, Camel, on the .NET. Right. So, since both are supported by Microsoft, it's sort of uh, an uphill struggle to say we want to establish a third language that somehow fits between C sharp and F sharp. I think they're they're easier targets for us, and we concentrate on them. That's good. Well, thank you very much, Martin, for talking to us and. Uh, uh, if you don't get to hear Martin live, uh, you do want to try and uh, check out the slides are online and uh, uh, his video will be online in the uh, coming months. So, uh, you know, make sure you find out about Scala, the simple parts. Thank you. Thanks. Great to see you.